This is basically impossible fizzle. I don't know what the board would have to look like. Yeah. Maybe uh, Chains of Mephistopheles or some such. Anyhow, uh, we have Kevin Walner. He's on our left, and he is playing the Charles Bug deck, originally advocated by, by Jerry Thompson and, and Todd Anderson. Basically, the primary synergy of this deck is Char Charlotte's Agent into Ancestral Visions. Uh, as when you, like we saw with Brad Nelson, when you cascade into a zero mana spell, you get to play. Yep. So, just like the same way you can with Hypergenesis, you can do that with, with the Ancestral Vision. And you incorporate that into what is otherwise a fairly conventional bug shell of spot removal. Uh, not much in the way of counter spells, because you don't want to be cascading into those, but cards like Tarmogoyf, Death Ride Shaman, Baleful Strix, and so on. So just good value plays, uh, some disruption and, and, and uh, hymns and such, and then backing it all up with, with Starless Agent and Ancestral Visions. Uh, on your right, you're going to see Greg Mitchell playing Reanimator. Not your traditional Reanimator deck here, either. Um, you're going to find your thoughts. He's a couple of Cabal Ooh, Therapies. Shallow Grave. Yeah, some Entombs and Shallow Grave here we is, go. The, is the big one here. Um, also, four copies of Gristlebrand and Emrakul, and two copies of Children of Corliss. Um, which you, I, I bet you don't even know what that does. I don't. Yeah. And so we'll end up bringing it up. We'll bring it on screen for you, uh, for you guys, if it does become relevant over the course of this matchup. But he does have a couple copies of Gorio's Vengeance, four copies of Shallow Grave. Uh, he actually has Tendrils of Agony in his deck as well. So this deck is heavily based around Gristlebrand, on getting it into play and using that ability. And we'll see if he's able to accomplish that. I mean, thus far, Greg is 4-0. And as is Kevin, so we're going to I mean, move right along into round five. He has Dark Ritual and Chromox in his deck. He is much more of a hybrid Storm Reanimator deck than he is uh, a pure reanimation deck. Yeah. So he can do the turn one Dark Ritual uh, in Tomb, plus Gorio's Vengeance, a Gristle Brand, and try to go off that way. Or he can just play, you know, your normal reanimation game. So we do see a Ponder here from Greg. We are going to see Fern Catacombs here, sacked by Kevin. We'll see what he's going to come out with here. It says uh, Bug Deck does have copies of Hymnatoriac. It also does have some copies of uh, the old Tarmogoyf there. And he has four copies of AJ Soccer's Invitational card, Baleful Strix. So much free stuff. Yep. Look at all that stuff. Baleful Strix is super powerful, assuming your opponent's not doing anything. This is Legacy. They're probably doing something. Unfortunately, they are likely to be doing something. Oh, but the value. <laughs> you can pitch it to Force of Will. Yep. So much, so much stuff. Yeah. You sure can. No, honestly, there's plenty of matches for the cards. Pretty sweet. I mean, any, anything where your opponent's trying to attack, this is another good value play, another way to attrition them out. Yeah. But it's not going to be at its best here. And this is the card that is always sweet, as we're going to see him to Torak here, two cards, discard at random. Just give you the old spit in the eye. Thought season, polluted Delta. Are the cards either going to go away to him? And Greg is going to pass, or excuse me, Kevin's going to pass the turn back to Greg. Him is a little bit dangerous against Greg's deck, of course, because he is a reanimation strategy, so he does want those cards in the graveyard. And, and Kevin's deck is actually not well set up for this matchup, at least game one. He has no Force of Wills and no Thought Seizes. He just has hymns and then ways to control the board and draw cards. Uh, so I think Greg, with any any reasonable hand... Now, Greg is, of course, going to have to play around some things because he, he doesn't have this information, but... Uh, Kevin's not well set up to fight this exact style of deck. We're going to see a Charless Agent here from Kevin. Oh, find so a much free. It's yep. so free. Yep. There's a lot of cards moving around. Somehow two creatures coming to play. Look at all Look at all this. Equating a three power on the board. And they draw from the Baleful Strix. Actually draws Ancestral Vision. So if only that one were free. As we do see the fetch line here cracked on Kevin's end step by Greg. And we're going to see it in Tomb. And again, Kevin cannot fight over any of this game one. So Gristlebrand's going to go to the graveyard. In Tomb, a very, very powerful tutor spell, putting the creature into the graveyard. It can be any card, which is kind of unique. But this was a card that was unbanned last year, I believe it was. A little longer ago than yeah. that, I believe. And this is where things can spiral out of control. Yeah. Gorio's Vengeance, the card being cast on the Gristle brand here. You're champions of Kamigawa Rare. Yeah. Splice an arcane, you can ignore that part. The part that ma matters, of course, is return to target legendary creature card from your graveyard to play. It gains haste, removed from the end of the game to one turn, so Gristle brand will be there for one turn. But I got a feeling, Patrick, that one turn is all Greg's going to need. Yeah, and under normal circumstances, a, a normal reanimator deck would just be drawing some cards and 
wouldn't really want to attack because of the Baleful Strix, but Greg's setup actually allows him to kill this turn if he draws well enough. So you're going to see that second activation here from the Gristle Brand. Gristle Brand, you guys do see on the screen the Avacyn Restored Mythic. Scary, scary card. There was a one point in time where people can make a solid argument for banning this card in Legacy. I think those talks have died down a little bit, and justifiably so, but it is still just a very, very good card. It's definitely, it creates, definitely creates a ceiling for other reanimation targets. So we do see Greg has drawn 14 cards thus far. Marsh Flats is the land he's going to play for the turn. You see a Dark Ritual in his hand, and a Lotus Petal among those handful of cards. Marsh Flats is going to knock Greg down to four. It'll be interesting to see if Greg has found what he's looking for, as he does get a, get a Swamp. He's going to use it. He's going to cast Dark Ritual. And cast another Dark Ritual. So he's going to up to five mana. And you can definitely tell, Patrick, that he knows what he wants to be doing here. Right. This, isn't a, this doesn't look like his first rodeo with this deck. He's going to cast Thoughtseize. He's going to go down to two. He's going to make sure that the coast is clear here. I think he's going to find out that it is, as he does see a Pernicious Steed, an ancestral, an ancestral Visions, a Brainstorm, a Creeping Tar Pit, and a Bayou. The coast could not be more clear, yeah. as it looks like you know he's going to select some card there. He's going to take the Brainstorm. So now, with, with full information, uh, we're going to Tomb again. This is going to get... Gonna get themselves an Ember Cruel. And you see him counting up some things here about the number of spells that he's cast. Yeah. So he's gonna go get an Ember Cruel, and I assume with the trigger on the stack, we're gonna Shallow Grave. You see him rifling through his hand very, very quickly. Oh, sorry, Gorion's gonna go around mentions again. And he's able to do that with the Emrakul trigger on the stack because it actually does use the stack. It doesn't just get shuffled away immediately. So it will come into play as well, and you're going to see Eliminator, excuse me, Emrakul's Annihilator trigger. Going to force Kevin to sack all the permanents, and this is going to be an attack for a whole lot of damage. You see Kevin say, yeah, that's, that, that, that's what you do, yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's more than your life total, I promise. That's it. So Greg Mitchell up a game with his reanimation strategy uh, over Kevin Walter and Charlotte's Bug deck. And again, as you said, no way for Kevin to interact game one. No force of wills, no dazes, no, I mean, haven't read stifles, spell snares, nothing. Yeah, he has, basically has hens. Yeah. That's a, and that's about it. I mean, his deck is, is pure value. You know, we were talking earlier about decks trying to outgrind each other. I'm sure his deck is set up quite well for the bug mirror match, for example. Yep. Or maybe against John matchups. So I'm sure Death, uh, Baleful Strix, rather, is probably actually pretty solid against John. But against an unfair deck, his game one setup is just, it's not good. Uh, and it was reflected in that game. So onto the sideboards here. Kevin has a little bit of juice in the sideboard to bring in against decks like this. He has three copies of Thought Season, two copies of Force of Will. Those are easy. He also has two copies of Mind Break Trap, which are not at their best here uh, because. By the time Greg's in a position to be casting multiple spells, the damage has already been done. Like he might already have, he might already have Grizzle Brand in play, for example. Yeah. Uh, but it wouldn't surprise me as well to see him bring in that, this here because he has so many, basically dead cards. He's got, you know, he's got a Jit. He's got four copies of Abrupt Decay, and so I suspect that he would want to try to bring in even just as a four mana counter spell might be better than other cards he has access to. Yeah. Other than that, that look about it. Yeah, I mean, that, I mean, he's got two forces and three thought seasons for sure, and then two mail storm pulses if he wants to go deep. That would be, but, pretty, yeah. that would be pretty deep. Well, I mean, it, like you have you have deed, jit, and abrupt decay, and those are blank or close to it. So that that sixth card you want to take out regardless, and you only have five for sures in the two forces wells and the three thought seasons. So you probably want to bring in one mind breed trap anyway, and at that point. Uh, you know, maybe you want to cut something else. Maybe cut one of your Baleful Strixes or something. Because sure. just, I, I have to imagine that you just need more of that saturation of stuff to to be able to beat this deck. Sure. And but you know, Baleful Strix isn't doing a ton for you. Yeah. Uh, taking a look over here at Greg's side of things, four copies of Show and Tell. 
Okay. Uh, which is something you know that's interesting here because he does have four Gristle Brands and one Ember Cruel. His show and tells aren't outrageous like they are in other decks. You know, a, a deck that we saw previously, the Dream Halls deck with Enter the Infinite, for example, is a much more uh, show and tell centric deck. But could see that coming in here to just mitigate some discard. Uh, you also find two Cabal Rituals, a, a, an Echoing Truth, two Chain of Vapors, three Pith and Needles, a Limb Duel's Vault, and two Extra Fates. And the reason you're going to find those Cabal Rituals there, the card that stands out among the rest of these, of course, is because he does have one Tendrils of Agony in his main deck. So, again, he can play a mini Storm route, oddly enough, um, and, you know, be able to fuel that through Gristlebrand. And it wouldn't surprise me if this Show and Tell Cabal Ritual Limb Duel's Vault type of stuff was all about just trying to de-emphasize his graveyard in the post-board games. Yep. Because, you know, most people are going to have their extra fates or their bridges or their crypts or their ley lines or whatever. Another incentive to try to build the deck the way that Greg has here is you can sideboard in such a way that you can ignore graveyard hate if you want to. Yep. It's a lot of slots. But decks like this, again, I, I bring this up all the time, I'm always surprised by combo sideboards and Legacy that have what appears to be eight cards for particular matchups. Because your deck's just this redundant engine, you can't cut out that many cards. But if he's trying to take an entirely different line altogether, that's a pretty good use of sideboard slots. You know? So we'll see what's happened here. I mean, Greg's take on Reanimator is much different than your traditional take, much different than your Entomb, Exhum, Animate Dead versions that, you know, Jerry Thompson and Reed Duke have had a lot of success with. This is a lot more combo-centric. It might be, you know, vulnerable to some different things here. Shallow Grave, again, a card that you don't see very often, but Looked impressive that particular game. Oh yeah, that I mean that was a, a lot of decks can win pretty easily once they've uh, reanimated Gristlebrand in fairness, but most decks cannot win that turn, yeah. and so that cuts out a range about your opponent could, could potentially have. So we do see both players taking a look at their opening seven cards. Kevin is going to take a mulligan here. Again, Kevin is not that traditional bug deck in that he doesn't have that many ways to interact with his opponent. The discard um, can be good, depending on what Himnatora gets and what thoughts he finds, but more often than not, I think that Greg is okay if that's the uh, interaction that's going to be taking place in the matchup. Yeah, certainly playing against a blue-black deck, Greg has to be pretty thrilled with the level uh, and power of interaction that Kevin has. Yeah. He's definitely on the low end in terms of interacting with the unfair decks. You know, for other bug decks and for Jun decks, I think Kevin is well set up not having this counter magic and being able to outgrind them uh, with tools like Baleful Strix and Shardless Age and Ancestral Visions, but for your combo decks, I think he's in a yeah. little bit of trouble. Yeah, certainly game one is a almost unwinnable, yeah. and then the post-board games, he's leaning a lot on the same type of tools that a lot of players have in game one, you know. You see a Tropical Island from Kevin, he's going to pass it back, he's on six cards, of course. Greg is going to keep his opening seven, start with an underground sea and a ponder. Pondered into two therapies and an Emrakul. You do see Chrome Locks in Greg's hand right now. He does have two copies of those in his main deck. Again, this is a reanimator deck, but it's also a, it's got a little little touch of storm in it. Yeah. So he's gonna pass. It appears that he does not have a second land, but he has a bunch of moxes and rituals. And Wasteland is oh, the Wasteland's to, pretty devastating here. Yep, Wasteland's going to take care of that underground, see? So that is a little bit of an issue here. Going to be super reliant on Chromox as Greg does draw another Cabal Therapy. Let's see how he leads. I, I, I believe I saw correctly um, that next card he's going to be drawing is an Ember Pool, correct? Yep. Lotus Petal. We're going to see a brainstorming response. <laughs> Greg puts that forward <laughs> and says, I, if you want to counter that, feel free. <laughs> you see a force of will. Wow, All right. aggressive. Force of will, removing force of will. Good job by Greg by leading with the uh, by leading with the pedal here, because if his Chromox had gotten forced, it would be a disaster. Yeah. Very, very aggressive from Kevin. Yeah, I'm a little bit surprised to see that there. I mean, he might be feeling like Greg's stuck on that was his one land. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's clear that that's what his thought is, is that maybe he just doesn't have any more lands. Maybe he has some information that he knows that Greg doesn't have that many lands in his deck. Because he, he only does play 14. 
And Greg's apprehensive about committing this Chromox to the table now because of the threat of abrupt decay. So he's actually going to say go. He's not going to try to do anything yet. Well, we're going to see suspend on Sexual Vision, and Kevin's going to pass the turn back. All right, so now I suspect we're going to be happy to get our mocks out. Yep, and there's your Chrome Mox. And gets the green light. And Greg going to put Brainstorm on for the imprint and is actually going to cast another Brainstorm here. In so Tomb. In Tomb. Tendrils of Agony. And? Dark Ritual, so. Not a If we don't have another, if we don't have a pedal here, we're in, we're in trouble. We may have just done the, uh, the old Brainstorm lock ourselves. Yeah, now, now Greg's in some trouble here. You'll see Ancestral Visions tick down to three counters. Kevin's going to take a draw step, looking for a second land here. And does just pass the turn back. We do know that Kevin has a Hymnatoric in his hand, but he's going to need to assemble two more lands to even be able to do that, because he has no black mana. Finds a Delta. He's going to sacrifice that polluted Delta right away. Probably going to see... Underground Sea here, potentially a bio, but it is going to be the Underground Sea. So one black source here for him. Him not that great right now, Patrick, because Greg does have seven cards in his hand and is looking at a discarding soon. Yeah. Ideally, Kevin would want to wait this out a little bit longer and him after some action's been played, and there's an abrupt decay, which is why Greg was so hesitant to commit that mox. You a little surprised to see that in his deck after sideboard? Yes. It was a, of course, it was excellent right there, but I think that's the exception and not the rule. Seek the ball therapy discarded here. Vision's beginning to tick down. One more turn to go. See another abrupt decay in Kevin's hand. You can see a Tarmogoyf now start to put a clock on things. And as they do, check the power and toughness of that. We'll probably have the Tarmogoyf die come out for you guys to see how just how large that bad boy is. It is a four or five. Yeah, it's, I believe it's instant land creature, uh, instant land sorcery artifact. Artifact for Chrome Mox. Yeah. All right, basic island. So he's out of the brainstorm lock now. But he still needs to find black mana. Yep. Now we're gonna see ancestral visions. Kevin says, I'm going to target myself with that. You don't get anything from me. Four cards overall for the turn. And he's a, Kevin's got a surprising number of... Like he's just drawn his Pernicious Deed. He does have some surprising cards in his deck after sideboard here. Breath of Can Pernicious Deed being, being the two biggest surprises. Makes you wonder what he sideboarded out there. You are going to see a Death Rite Shaman. That's a scary one, right? Yeah, now it, it makes just going through the reanimation hoops much, much harder. But he just found Lotus Petal, so... It wouldn't surprise me if there's some way to actually just kill him from here. We'll find out, but he's got a ton of rituals in his hand. And if Kevin doesn't have one of his, his last remaining force... Uh, no, he only has two force wells on his board. Yeah. So, Greg doesn't know this, but he is actually in the clear to do whatever he wants. Yeah, and when your opponent resolves Ancestral Visions the previous turn and has as many cards in his hand as Kevin does, you might be a little bit gun-shy, right? Right. About what, what, you, what is possible uh, for you to be able to do. You know, Greg may come to the conclusion that it's time to just go for it anyway because I'm going to need some pressure here and Deathrite Shaman is going to become active next turn as you do see him cast the Lotus Petal and the Dark Ritual, so it looks like he is going to make that move. Yeah, it's not likely to get better as time yeah. progresses. So. Yep. So those are going to resolve. You see Cabal Therapy. Kevin's going to show him his hand. Uh, him to Torak, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Two more copies of an Abrupt Decay, Pernicious Deed, and an Ancestral Visions. A hand of nonsense, basically. Yeah, just a right lot here. of cards. A lot of cards that Greg does not care about. No way for Kevin to interact on Greg's turn, and you can just tell right now that it looks like Kevin has just misidentified what he's playing against. And so now it looks like, you know, he's getting an idea of the storm count for the turn, maybe, or maybe what mana is floating. Yeah. So 
So two black, we're going to four black. Yeah, we have Entomb. I mean, we have Entomb. And now we get to Shallow Grave. And this is... Old, old school. Yep. Another <laughs> Gorio's Vengeance type effect. Yep. So now Gristlebrand's going to come into play. One black gets floating. With Greg at 16, he can he can activate Gristlebrand twice. And you see he's going to tap on it once to activate it. So seven fresh ones coming. And he still hasn't played a land this turn. Yep, which is certainly key. And so long as he can get himself up to four mana, I think he does have his tendrils in his hand, um, he might be able to just finish him off, uh, right. Kevin, that way. And again, he does have Lotus Petals in his deck and Chrome Oxen, so he, uh, he can get the four mana here. Also does have more Dark Rituals in his deck. You also find two Cabal Rituals in his sideboard. And as you see here, as we have a Storm count of six currently, it's going to be a total of 14 cards. Greg's going to go down to two. There's your land for the turn in Underground Sea. No mana floating, and we're going to fire off another yep. Entomb. This will empty the pool. This will be an Entomb. I got a feeling this is going to be the Ember Cool. Oh, all right. It's actually going to be Child of Corliss. Or, excuse me, Children of Corliss. We're going to need that one up. Oh, oh my goodness. Yep. Someone went deep. Take it all in. <laughs> Is that Gristlebrand? You do what you do, big man. I'm getting through my deck whether you like it or not. With the help of, you guessed it, a human rebel cleric. Someone went, someone went real deep. <laughs> You can definitely tell this is not Greg's first rodeo. Here. No. His oh, deck no. is built a certain way. He has a purpose in mind. And you, you see Patrick when he's going off here. It, it, he's definitely, he seems very comfortable with what he's doing. And that he's yeah, done this no, before. There's no hesitation. Yeah. As you do see, it's Shallow Grave. Going to get back the children. Going to sacrifice this. I'm going to gain a bunch of life. And you are going to see Kevin take a look at it, which is why we brought on the scene for you guys as well. This is a card that is not see play a lot. This also is one of the first times I've ever seen a reanimation spell cast on a target that cost less mana than the reanimation spell did. Yeah, that's rare. That is actually quite rare. So, did they pick up 14 here, it looks like? Yeah, he's going to pick up 14 life when he does sacrifice. This is, you know, the... the Looks like the spotter was just clarifying things for Kevin. Oh Martin no, it's actually going to be works. it's actually going to be twenty one because he gains he gains seven off the Crystal Brand hit. Ah uh, yes, and so he can draw seven again and now gain twenty one. Yeah. As if it wasn't unfair enough already, it's just gotten better. And so it looks like, yeah, with the, with the hand up here, he's going to demonstrate. Okay, here's all the things that I can do. I'm going to gain a bunch of life. I'm going to get through my deck and be able to find this tendrils to kill you. This is a very innovative take on a reanimation strategy. Yeah, this is cool. This is cool. I mean, I was at one of the opens in Vegas. I was hanging out with some of the uh, with some of the Vegas guys, and one of them was working on something kind of like this, but not nearly with this level of efficiency. Yeah. You see another dark ritual there. Pithing needle, a card that Greg just did reveal. And there's your tendrils of agony. He's going to cast that, and Kevin oh. is going to extend the hand. Greg Mitchell, 2-0, with his unique take on Reanimator, defeating Kevin Walner and his Charlotte's Bug deck in pretty decisive fashion. That was that was real impressive. Yeah. I mean, again, Greg got a big assist from the fact that Kevin's setup in game one is just, it doesn't really have 